While the Boston Celtics enter the preseason following an all-time beastly championship run, ESPN's doing everything they can to deny this truth. Here at Deflow Hoops, since Boston won the title, your boys made seven Celtic videos respecting and calling out the disrespect for the 18-time champions because winning four best-of-seven series after a grueling 82-plus game grind is an accomplishment that's difficult to repeat and that should be savored. Despite Boston being the most likely team to go back-to-back -back in recent memory, you'll see the biggest talking point denying that claim, a response to it, the entire reasoning for why the Boston Celtics remain looking for revenge, and more on 2024's champs. Right quick, 75% of you watching right now are not subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and follow at Hoops on Instagram and X for a follow back. Thank you for your support. You're tremendously appreciated. Even after finally getting over the hump by going all in for franchise ring number 18, it's takes like these from Kendrick P that still give the C's a juicy bone to pick. Keep in mind, this was before the Knicks traded for Cat. Basketball is competition. No one in the NBA is scared right now of the Boston Celtics. Mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know this. This is why the New York Knicks went out and they went and got Mikael Bridges and they upgraded their roster. This is why the Philadelphia 76ers went out and got Paul George and upgraded their roster. They're coming into training camp feeling great. And to be honest with you, let's be real, a lot of people been look, was looking at the path that the Celtics went through to win the NBA championship and say that they actually had an easy path towards the competition and, and the teams that they played that were not healthy. So again, I, I love it that the Celtics are coming in with a chip on their shoulder, especially the two young superstars in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Whether that's because they have a beef with the Olympics, like Jason Tatum said, the best thing that happened, for, one of the best things that happened was him not winning the finals MVP. I think we're going to get a better version of Jason Tatum. But at the end of the day, teams did stack up in the rest of the league, especially in the Eastern Conference, to go look to the Celtics eye to eye, and they're going to do that this season. It's a reason that we're haven't we we're on this streak right now where teams haven't repeated. It's hard. Teams are getting better every single offseason. Don't get it twisted. I know the Eastern Conference is more difficult, even significantly more with now Carl Anthony Towns being traded to the Knicks and with Paul George joining the Philadelphia 76ers in free agency, but to say that neither of those teams are concerned with the powerhouse that just won the chip is, quite frankly, asinine. Even with the Knicks having Towns and Bridges, the Celtics still have the best starting five in the NBA and the talent to match New York at every position. One of the main talking points countering why the Celtics had an easy path to the finals, which wasn't mentioned in my last Celtics video countering Shaq when he said that, is the fact that they were without third scoring option Kristaps Porzingis for 12 of the 19 playoff games they had, which included being without KP for consecutive series against Cleveland and Indiana. They still went 16-3, becoming the second team next to the 2017 Kevin Durant Warriors in the 16-win playoff era to lose three playoff games or less. They were one of eight teams in NBA history to have a point differential of 10 plus between the regular season and playoffs. Their 10.72 playoff scoring margin was the best in NBA history. They never trailed in a playoff series. They had 80 wins between the regular season and playoffs, and among 80 plus win teams, their 79% winning percentage was ninth best in NBA history. Among the top 11 ranked players in 2024 playoff defensive rating with at least 11 games played, the Celtics had over half of them. This was factually one of the most dominant champions ever. They weren't even at full strength, and you still have people like Kendrick Perkins completely writing them off in 2025. But for Perkins, this seems personal at this point with all the hate he's been throwing the Celtics way as of late, as the man was banned from the Celtics parade and is seemingly salty about that. Perkins even called Celtics play-by-play -play analyst and the man he won a championship with in 2008, Brian Scalabrini, a coward for saying that the organization didn't have a quote-unquote open arms thing with Kendrick. So let's assume Perkins is being salty. He's still commentating for the national media and has the responsibility to put a bias like that to the side and act professionally and to respect the Celtics for the dominant champions they are. Perk was correct about the Jays wanting revenge for what happened with Team USA, but for the most part, he's just constantly spewing negativity about the Celtics due to the organization going in a different direction in terms of keeping him away from the parade and not having the friendliest relationship with him anymore generally. 
Then again, maybe respecting the Celtics wasn't in his best interest anyway, given when people at ESPN actually decide to treat Boston like the powerhouse team that they are, the network overall won't stand for it. For example, one of the most intelligent voices in the basketball media, Zach Lowe, stated last week that he thinks the NBA should be terrified of the Celtics. Less than a day later, ESPN fired him. There's an agenda here from that network, and it isn't in favor of Boston. But on this channel, I have a pro Celtics agenda, given whoever wins the championship earns my respect and then some. In Abu Dhabi, the Celtics are set to play two preseason games against the 2023 championship winning Denver Nuggets at Etihad Arena. Jalen Brown still finds himself with a lot to prove despite winning finals MVP. Brown was ranked as the third best second option in basketball behind Devin Booker and Anthony Davis recently by Yahoo Sports. I get we're going to consider Jalen Jason Tatum's number two, and rightfully so, but Brown should have at least been ranked as the best second option in basketball after what he did for Boston in 2024's playoffs. We'll get to that, but then again, the Jays could care less about who gets more respect between the two. On the cover of Time Magazine, in the edition, Jalen Brown was asked about his relationship with Jason Tatum, to which he said, quote, we have a championship level relationship. History is going to remember us both for what we accomplished this past season. I think we have a lot more in store for people." End quote. It was one hell of a playoffs for number 7, but Brown's hungry for more after being shamefully snubbed by the national team he wanted to represent so badly. It's clear that Brown would have made Team USA's path to gold a lot easier had he been selected to the team. In 2024's playoffs, Jalen joined Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, and LeBron James as a few players to have won their first championship and finals MVP at age 27. Brown has the third most amount of playoff points since 2020 in the NBA, a couple spots behind superstar running mate Jason Tatum, who leads the pack by a wide margin, something JT doesn't get enough credit for, by the way. It was a postseason where JB7 became one of 10 players ever to average at least 23 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and a steal on at least 51% shooting from the field in a championship run next to Kareem, Bird, Jordan, Worthy, Hakeem, LeBron, AD, Giannis, and Jokic. Some nice company. It's not only what Brown provides on the court which would have made Team USA's path to gold a lot easier but what he provides both on and off it, in terms of his calming presence, words of wisdom, and generally his leadership presence. As mentioned in the recent article about him from Time Magazine, Brown has taught himself Spanish and Arabic, he studied philosophy and meditations, he plays acoustic guitar and piano, and he's lectured at Harvard's Graduate School of Education. This wisdom has blessed Brown with the determination to come back annually with improvements to his game between the lines. His left hand went from something he really struggled with to a weapon he turned to. His ball handling, defense, and shooting have developed significantly throughout the years. This past summer, he seemed to have bulked up a ton, something that'll help him in the post as well as with his finishing around the basket. Brown is never a finished product, and that's what's made him the powerhouse of a player he's morphed into. As his Instagram handle stands for, faith, consistency, hard work pays off. This was your boy D-Flow and I'll see you next video.